So let me turn first of all to you, Seamus Mallon. You remember those days well. Why is it that everything has changed? Why is it that nothing has changed? I think there's a, a quite simple reason. Uh, nothing to do with the intricacies of policy, but to, to do with uh, a statement I once heard in Market Hill uh, after the pubs closed. And a lady shouted at another lady, if the Emmons are for it, we are against it. <laughs> and that, of course, is where we're at. George W. Bush, in his own inimitable way, if you remember, he said, it's them and us for it. But what do we mean by that? What do we mean by those terms? Who are the thems and who are the uses? And we start, I think when we start to look at that, then we start to see if in effect the politi political process is adequate for the problems that we face. Now, I think we could all uh, look back and point to things that we could have done that we didn't that might have improved that situation. I pose the question, did the churches do sufficient? Looking back to that time, did they take too softly, softly approach to the use of violence for sectarian and political reasons. And in just the last point, it is this, that we have never really got to the stage in Northern Ireland, despite the number of years of its existence, we have never got to the point where, in effect, <coughs> the community at large doesn't know the history of the place. Many people weren't taught Irish history. Many people, many schools weren't allowed to teach it. And you have two communities uh, relying on the platitudes and the lap the frag around me boys instead of looking at what really happened. Those are some those are some of the issues. And I just make this last point and it is this maybe we have to start looking at <coughs> the pro political process not from a structural administrative point of view, although that has to be done as well, but to start with what we do to deal with the problems. In 12 years, neither of the two parties who were in charge, that is, in case there's any doubt about it, DUP and <coughs> Sinn Féin, not one scrap of proper proposals were made in relation to how we as people can live better together. They haven't done it. And that was the whole essence of the Good Friday Agreement. Now, both of those parties started that. One stating that they would smash the agreement, the other refusing to actually, uh, on the morning that George Mitchell did the round of the parties, refused to say they were in favour of it. Are we getting to that point? Are we at a point where we have a political process which feels itself more powerful and more at home in the type of divided community that we have. It's 
worth thinking about. And I live in a small village. I've born there, lived there all my life. And uh, how often have I heard in a, not such a soft whisper, at the other end of the bar. What does that fucker think he's doing in here? Does he not know this is a Protestant bar? <laughs> There's where we're at. If we want to start and solve the problem, we have to start with the most immediate ones. And in my view, the most immediate one is a divided community. How do we start to get it together? Maybe for the first time. But it does lead to a question from, from an SDLP perspective. If it's a contrivance to get everybody in government, was it not a mistake then to go into the opposition and break the contrivance? Yes. My view, as my colleagues know, was that we shouldn't have. Why? For this reason. The DUP have made no secret of the fact that they are going to change this damn thing in such a way that it will become their, their agreement. It will become their way forward. And believe it or not, Sinn Féin are doing exactly the same thing. They want to put their stamp on it. Don't forget, St Andrews was the DUP having a go at this. The, the, the Sinn Féin are now doing it. They want their stamp on it. They want any SDLP footprint on it. Wait, Dad. Okay. That's what they're at. Thank you. And that's what they have done. And I'll just make a last point. Briefly, please. Can you, yeah. How can you explain the way in which two parties, like the Ulster Unionist Party and the SDLP, who kept faith in the political process, who kept hope alive when it was dying, on the verge of a civil war. How do you create peace by doing away with that middle ground? Okay. And the last word, Seamus. You've, uh, I think there's very few people in this part of the world can reach back into our recent past. And uh, the, import, the, the secret of knowing the future is to understand the past. Give us your experience. What's going to happen, do you think? in the next 30 years? Well, for certain, I'll not be here. <laughs> <laughs> you not be Lord Mallon, no? <laughs> I've turned that down. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't want to be a hypocrite. <laughs> um, <clears throat> in relation to that point, I'm 80-odd years of age, right? The one thing that I think each one of us has in our own capacity is to be good ancestors as opposed to being good rememberers. Think about it. We, we have a remembrance for everything, real and imagined. <laughs> But we're not thinking too much of what we are going to leave behind. Are we going to leave a place like it is now for our, those who come after us, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, with all the scars on it, with all of the evilness that we saw. So I'd recommend that as we get nearer the end, as I am, I'm thinking more about how I can be a good ancestor than a good rememberer. I come from a Republican tradition, a violent Republican tradition. Right. 
It took me almost 80 years of age to come to grips with all of the falsities that <laughs> I have heard, seen and read about over the years. I'm quite sure that applies to all sections of the community. I just leave you with one thought. Spinoza, the uh, uh, philosopher, said that uh, peace wasn't just an absence of war, that it was an attitude of mind, a disposition towards benevolence, confidence, and justice. Benevolence, confidence, and justice. Surely those are three great starting points with which, from which to look at the overall problems. And I would like to see two things happening. I stop now, term. <coughs> I would like to see a complete uh, study of unionism not by me but by unions because I am <laughs> fairly well convinced you know that it's not as stable a thing as some might think this the political mind in London has moved and having wrote moved on and I think we should bear that in mind so I want to know what unionism is when are they going to let us down again when are they going to let unionists fight the next battle for them and then disown them when it comes to the talk after the talks after that battle I want the same done, I'd like to see the same done with Republicaners. What is it? A United Ireland. <coughs> what is a United Ireland? Is it a federal Ireland? A confederal Ireland? And if it isn't either of those things, what's wrong with the United States of America? All of those issues have got to be looked at. Because let's not have any more decades in our history where the old lie puts young men and women in graves and the, pe the people who tell them the old lies then reap the rewards of their awful of their awful uh, role in it all Dulce et decorum est pro patria mora. It is a good and noble thing to die for one's country. Is it? I leave it there. <laughs>